paper cups, teaspoon, bit of board, primed acrylic paints, PVA glue, uh, a dropper, not the ink, I'm going to use the dropper for the silicone oil. Um, I put some glue into the PVA glue into the pots already, now I want to add the acrylics, stir them up, make them pourable, and then add a drop of the silicone oil to each. Then we pour all into one cup and it should work. We will see. Silicone oil, let's see what happens. Let's put one drop into here. Now what a drop is going to be in size is experimental, but we'll see. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. One in there, and I'm going to put too much in, but we'll see because we have never done this before. Put that in that jar. We might have a bit of fun with that in a minute, too. Let's try a bit of a cooking on top and see what happens. Right now, yeah, the wind is stirring up again, so we'll start from the lightest one, go to the darkest, even a bit away, which is probably white being the lightest, isn't it? But, I've been waiting a while for some materials to come to me. I wanted to try um, doing this explosive quality of paint one can get by mixing uh, silicone oil and so on with the paints and the, and the uh, acrylics uh, to get some background effects and abstract qualities that I want to use as a basis to an abstract painting. I've been, I've been doing a little experimenting with this, which has helped me, but I'm going to be flying by the seat of my pants on most of this, so uh, I'll allow you to share it with me and just see where we get and hope it's going to be a success. Parts of it may be, parts of it may not, but I'll gradually drag it together anyway. So we're going to take it outside, and because uh, it's a big painting, and see if I can produce these effects on here outside. The first thing I'm going to do is try and get my paint mixes right. I've got some PVA glue there, paper cups I can reuse, and my acrylic paints behind, uh, teaspoons of course, and I'm going to need my um, silicone oil later on. And I'm going to experiment with a few acrylic inks as well into this to see how that does things. It's going to be quite fun. Uh, so first I need to make up the correct mixes of the PVA glue and water and the paint and then add the oil at the end and then we're away very quickly. I need to have some cling film ready so I'll also need to have electricity out there to be able to just singe the surface and try and bring some of these explosions out. It's not easy to know just how much of which car I'm going to need but uh, I've ordered some more. I'm going to start off with the white. Get a fair amount of that. I'm going to need quite a nice light pink, so I'll put the white with that as well. I want these to be pourable, so I've got to make them fairly fluid and thin with uh, the juice of the PVA glue. <coughs> which means that working out the quantities compared to that is not that easy. How much PVA glue? Well, let's see. I would think a good 100% plus, maybe 150% plus Then I want to add some water. Enough to just how much water. Again, we're going to have to experiment. Too thin. That looks 
pan right, maybe a bit thinner. Oh, that looks a bit wet up yet. Some into here as well. I put about a third in there, and that's pretty good. So not too much water, maybe a quarter to a third, and maybe just under just about the same medium as the paint, just about the same amount of PVA glue as the paint, and then about one third water, and that's giving me quite a nice mix. It's got to be really fluid of any lumps. So I'm not going to put the um, silicone oil in right until the, the end. So I'll mix it up so it's a nice consistency here and should just pour out evenly like that. So just mixing up these last bits of um, silicone oil. I put in three to four drops of silicone oil into these pots. I'm going to try two different ways. One is to pour colours one on top of the other into the pots and the other is to spread out lines of it and drag it through. I'm going to use cling film to do that. Um, with the colours that I don't mind a little bit mixing in with. I'm a little bit of acrylic ink here in case I want to use that at the end. Got all the pots of paint here ready. The first thing I'm going to do is to pour uh, one pot full of paints in different layers and pour that on and then we're going to try with what paint is left striping across backwards and forwards and dragging some cling film. Let's see what happens. I have no idea. I've seen it working. Let's see what we can do. So I'm going to pour some white in first. I don't want too much of any one colour. And then we'll see what colours we fancy next. Um, I think I'll go to a Lovely turquoise next, and depending on the height that I pour it as to how far it will go in, pour it all around, a little bit heavier. What should we try then? We'll have a nice red after that, perhaps. I don't want to do all the, all the colours in one go, um, I want to keep some sort of areas like that, so we'll, we'll have some deep blue next. Pour that in and on. A little bit higher up. Some from here, some from down there, little blobs. And then a nice purple, I reckon. I'm going to draw that from high up, first of all. So it goes down a bit deeper. And then a few spots and blodges on top. But this is all experimental, but I don't want to waste paint, so I've really got to hope it works. Um, we've had the turquoise, and to go on to a green. And again, from fairly high up, it drops in down to the bottom there. Then I'm going to go on to some vivid pink. Again, come up to the top a bit and drop in a bit. And I'm going to go to some black then. Finally, a colour which I haven't used, I don't, I don't want yellow in that yet, I think um, we'll go back to a different blue. Now, I'm just going to go back into that. I haven't got an awful lot of paint in there, I'm going to use other paints in a minute to do it next to it. I just want to go in and just stir a little bit, lift and stir a little bit, not too much. Now we're going to go onto the canvas. So, where are we going to start? I reckon I'm going to start here. I'm going to move that around a bit at first, just to get it flowing, and then just let go, and let's hope we get the sorts of effects we want. I can see it's already blistering on there. Zoom in on that bit. I can see some lovely explosions going on. The more I spread it, the more those explosions are going to get large. You can't see it now, of course, because they're wrong side up. Turn it that way. You can see some lovely effects we're just starting to get of where it's exploding out into those circles. And this thing I can see just that might trickle right on down there. And I want it to come the other way. It's already starting to set which is a problem. I may need to make it a bit wetter in future, I think. Turn it on. It's alright. You're doing alright. I'm going to see if we can 
drag it out some. And then what will happen when I put the hot air gun onto this? Right. While that's behaving itself, we're going to try another experiment and pour across this. No idea what's going to happen. I have some idea what could happen, what I'd like to happen, but what actually will happen is something else. See, the wind's blowing me all over the place, that's not healthy. Hold this cling film and we'll try and drag this all the way through here. As far as it will go. Same here, just linking it into this bit, across here, and let's see what effects we get with that. I can already see some nice cells, that's the word I was looking for, I can already see some nice cells happening here. Yes, look at that lovely area there. to do it before it dries off too much. There's some lovely effects now. As the cells break open. not getting huge cells so what I'm going to do next is experiment to put a bit more water and a bit more oil in and see what happens. That's a lot wetter now. Put a bit more oil in. I don't know whether it's too wet now, but we'll find out, won't we? What's up? Should be all right now. A bit more oil in now to all of them, just to see what happens. We've got fine effects now. I want some much bigger ones. So we're going to pour a whole pot full this time and really go for it. It's very thin this time. It's probably too thin, but which means that the paint is going straight down and in and not under the surface enough. So I'm not sure this is going to work at all. I think I've just made it far too thin. You know, the paint's not going to sit on the top. But it'll be interesting to see what it does do, won't it? Yeah, I made it a bit too thin. So the previous mix was about right. It's drying so fast, which is a nuisance. 
but we'll see what this does all the same. Any colours I haven't used yet? Yeah, the yellow. I won't need to stir this one at all, I don't think. We'll just put it straight on as it is and see what happens as it spreads out. All right, let's see what happens with that. Ready, hop. Didn't even go out when to tip it over then, but again, it's wonderful cells there, look. So that's quite interesting. I've got to get this to spread out, so. They're lovely big cells with it being much wetter. I want to use a bit of that cling film again to see if I can just drag it out. It's all experimental. I'll be able to use parts of it, whatever I know. So, wind again. Let's get the wind out of the way and we'll see what we can do just to drag it out a bit. Hopefully, this will work. It's the same thing again, though, a bit dragging it, but we'll see what the cells do. Now it's time to just drag the edge. Not entirely happy with that, but we'll see what we get. We should get these entirely dragged out. Need to cover the canvas. It's going to trickle and pour to that. I'm going to waste it. Let's see what effect we get. This way, and some quite fun ones by the look of it. I'll come back with the, with the heat in a minute. Let's get this on first. You can see it trying to react all the time. I've got to get on quick enough before it dries. I know where I want the deeper colours. So we do need a bit more colour down there. Oh, white, I haven't got that yet. Of course, white would be very useful. Oops, pour it all over the ground, why don't I? Grass can take it. And I think that's it now. Get some more. Let's see what we can do with that to drag those colours again in different directions. And let's see what we can get by just dragging it across the surface now. And the other way as well. And this is where it's definitely going to be needing some heat. And we hope that these colours are going to come through one another. I'm just dragging it rather than scraping it off the surface. I'm just, since I'm truly hoping that the uh, cells will break through. As they seem to be already in places, yeah, which is good. Around here. Yeah, I don't want too much there. That's beautiful there, isn't it? Yes, it really is. But I might even leave that bit. Right, let's dump that and we'll get the heat onto it. Oh, I haven't quite got there. Just need a bit more. Drive down that side. See some beautiful cells. I mean, just look at these. What's there? And let's see what they do with that. That was a lot more water and more oil. And 
Oh, that's gorgeous, that bit. That's what I was after originally. So obviously with more water and more oil, we can control the, the size of the cells more. That's what we're just after there. And this is nice, this is coming out. We've got little white areas and that little bloody paint over it. It's just starting to dry already, so I haven't got much time. Are you impressed? Not bad, is it? It's yeah. just drying so fast. But whether we need, whether it's the PVA that's drying or whether it's the paint that's drying, I'm not sure. Pour straight into it to break it up a bit. Okay. Just so break a bit more yet. Yeah. Any areas you don't like, now's the time to work on them. I think we've got the effect you were after, just about. It needs much more than that. The acrylic in is slightly transparent, so that's giving us another dimension again. Let's go and get some more colour in the acrylic inks for me. shake them up. So we've got that strong blue. I've done with the purple thanks but there's a we should be able to very strong blue. So this is using acrylic ink. This is the Turquoise acrylic ink now going on. Try and get this effect of these and this branches of coral going on. It's almost like an undersea painting in a way, isn't that water, isn't it? Yep. I've got some of the um, explosions going on, but not as many as I'm going to go with that. So if you want to take it from down here, I'll just pick it up and come with the camera around there. Right, that's it then. We've done that part of the painting. I've done the background. I'm just going to decide what I want to do with this, whether I want to do any more or not on top of it. Some people just like it as it is. 
I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet. I was originally my intention was to have taped um, shapes going in and around to be formal against the very informal shapes, um, but we'll see. Right, well, these colours are all dried now. I'm quite pleased with a lot of the uh, process that's gone on here. Um, this is the area I'm not so happy about. Uh, where I actually want to start work. I'm a bit confused here. I want to set some more formal shapes up across here using tape. There's a narrower tape, first of all, rather than the larger tape for this. I can show you to get the sharper, more detail that way. And it's a series of diamonds that I want at first and lattice work. There we go, it's kind of working. And decide how I'm going to do this. I'm placing the tape across. Unfortunately this texture of paint won't take the masking tape and I really do want to put both gold leafing and masking tape on so I'm going to give it a thin wash of PVA glue and um, water in the hope that that will resurface because it will dry clear but the tape will stick to it should seal it up a bit of luck just in this area here where I want to put the gold leaf on and then I want to actually add some metallic foil and gold leafing to this so I'm going to thicken up the mixture just a little bit and just I'm not using um, proper gold glue size for this at the moment using PVA glue which will dry clear anyway. I want to just start to get some areas of metallic foil and gold leaf around here where it's rather messy. I don't really like it around there. So what I can do to get some interesting effects there. I'm going to use metallic foil first of all. It's absolutely gorgeous. Oil has this variegated, beautiful variegated colours to it. Just stick it on there fairly randomly at the moment. Just get a lovely effect we get with that going into there already. I don't want to be too tidy with it. Areas of course, coming down through here, linking in these areas. I can brush this down later with a shortly with a stiff brush like a badger hair brush. You really want to sneeze at this stuff and it disappears on you. Gold against the black there should be nice, and against the blue. Let it get you just the right dryness to put this stuff on. You see how light that gold leaf can be with that piece of just dropped down there, floated in the wind. I wonder if that comes to all the gold leaf there in a minute. I'm just going to come down some of these bits. Yes, I quite like that. Now it becomes it links through better here. This here. Put a glue there and gold foil now rather than this mix, which is beautiful stuff, but I just want to try just bits of plain gold in places. This is the fine mode gold leaf, which is really effective. Just a little bit of gold on there. Plain gold I'm putting on now. It's lovely this variegated one. It's got blues and pinks and purples in it. And you can just pick out the gold the rest. Maybe I won't even need my taping at this rate. I quite like it as it is. I don't know how much more I want to really do on it. We'll see, finish off on there. I'll take a, a dry brush and just put it there. See how lovely that is. Beautiful. These textures just work with the uh, 
all heating so well, especially with this variegated metallic foil. Make sure it's pushed right down onto the glue. Loose bits will come off when it's dry. And the varnish will go right over the whole thing. A spray varnish. Doesn't let the brush get too sticky or bring stuff off rather than put it on. You know, I don't like to just use the special effects and not take it further, but you know, I'm really not sure whether I want to take you any further because I was going to start putting in some triangular and diamond shapes into it to act as a more formal um, pattern against this very fluid background but I feel actually looking at it now with this gold it just works as it is so I think I'm tempted just to leave this one I just love the textures and the colours of it I don't think it really needs more of it could become too pretentious so I think we'll just give this a coat of varnish and uh, leave it at that see how it comes out with that you can see how it brings the colours out more translucent so it, yeah more translucently and also will hold the gold leaf better. I'm using the Cobra water-based varnish at the moment which means I can work into it if I want to afterwards. Well, there we are then, varnish on and it's looking quite attractive.